here. And I mean, if you're saying the Nano Boost Metro is trolling, uh, we, I mean, we <laughs> talked with them after. They assured us that it was not trolling. However, they also didn't pull it out against Sweden and Finland. So who really yeah. knows? Come on, make it real, Kingdom. Bring my dream alive. Copy the Koreans. Fail it miserably. And then let offense take first point in the first push. We'll make it happen. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just want them to make it happen and have it not fail here, Rod. Uh, uh, this already uh, parts it. Appear to be failing. Well, we'll see if they leave spawn. With Just like it. my computer. I, I hope for it. They left spawn with what we're seeing right now, actually. Uh, so, <laughs> I, 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 I will jump give off you. The cliff? Are they I jumping off? Well, no. Like no. Symmetra is on the way out here, so Ajax. It is happening. We've got turrets up. ZPI will give you the honors. What do you see on this defense? <laughs> So what I'm seeing for this defense is they return the double builder here from the side of Kingdom. It's going to be Wolf on Torbjorn, Aardvark paying off, Ajax on that Symmetra, laying some turrets in clever positions, Juvenile on the Reinhardt, Jesus on Roadhog, and Manasso on Zarya. So definitely not the most conventional defense here on Aishinvald, but we'll see if Immortals has the answer to it as Hex uh, looking pretty standard for them. It does look pretty standard for them, although it does look like Ethan is going to be running a Zenyatta, which is not something we've seen very much lately. We did see it a little bit yesterday. So, I mean, it's standard-ish. They're also going to run a dive composition. So Agilities and Nomi are going to be on Winston and Genji as well. So maybe a little bit of scouting here. It does look like they have the tools they need to deal with this double builder. Right now, take a look at Nomi. Nomi not wasting any time. Right to the back immediately. Torbjorn going the fall. Wolf falling. But hey, Ajax getting two kills here with the aid of Juvenile. Moving oh, yeah. in. And <laughs> wait, the Symmetra's doing it right now. This is no joke. Ajax can actually finish off on Zarya here. It's huge. This is That's, reasonable. Uh... It's really important that Ajax was able to get in on some of those kills. I thought if he could have finished off one or two, then he probably would have teleporter up already, but at 70%. Now, I mean, the question is, were they confused by it? Were they thrown off by what they're seeing on the defense? Are they gonna be more prepared on their next go around? It looks like they are switching some things up. Nomi's off that Winston eighth and off that Zenyatta. They're going a much more standard composition now, not trying to dive in. They are going more standard. Wolf is going to be able to pick up some scrap, throw out the armor. And yeah, take a look at this for the defense. They will have a nano boost early on. Ithan already used his nano boost in the last fight. So take a look here, look here for Kingdom. They only need a little bit more to get teleporter. They will be opening up here with the nano boost. Juvenile moving in. A little bit of yeah. weird FPS like here. I don't know what's going on here, guys. But uh, Chance able to take on Juvenile. They're not going to fall to the nano boost. The Graton dealing with it. Grim Reality now starting to pierce through, taking down Shawaki. And this is where McCree can be so effective later on to fight. All about clean up. Just got the teleporter ring. Reinforcements coming up over the top. The tanks come over the top. That Moldenport bought Ajax time to get out of there alive. He's going to be trying to be about. The reinforcements are in. Nomi is so low. Oh, no, all that Nomi was low. Juvenile could have crushed him. I'm actually really surprised that Grim didn't shoot the Deadeye there, even though there was a shield in front, it would have cracked the shield. Either way, the teleporter reinforcements are coming in from Ajax and Mana Snow. Graviton in, going to take out just Nomi with that, but it's going to be enough. It's going to let the defense reestablish here. The teleporter has done its duty. All six charges have been used. Yeah, now Ajax trying to rebuild it back up at 7%. They do switch off of the Torb as well, but that bought the really big time they needed. Molten Core is a very strong ultimate because it just kind of puts the fear in you. It has got a lot of HP on that turret, 800. Uh, Torb himself at 600, so it buys a lot of time. It's just a big pool to chew through, and now they're going to stay on this Metro, but they got all the reinforcements back. Dare I say that kind of works so far. And they've burned a lot of time off the clock right now. They only have to hold for a minute three. Jesus Melee onto Agilities has the double kill. Nano boost in for more. A 3k here from Jesus as he's rolling in. Fighting versus Grim Reality. Gonna take a breather. Might be falling. Oh yeah. no, Zarya Shield gonna save him in the end. Ajax can just Grim bail. Reality he can fall. just leave right now so he doesn't get picked off and passively charges. They're gonna have another teleporter. They are gonna have another teleporter. So this is actually looking incredibly good for Kingdom. It was unconventional, but now with the teleporter up at only a minute left, it is going to be Immortals that are in an absolute pickle right now. And for Immortals, a lot is gonna depend here on Hyped. Hyped will have that Graviton Surge where you should be able to just roll in, drop the grab, and go from there. But even if they get a full wipe here, they're gonna have people coming back in off the teleporter. So for Immortals, their victory at this point is not guaranteed, but here comes Hyped, moving in, has the Graviton, drops the Graviton, pulls in four, and Grim Reality will be right there with the follow through, taking down two to start things out, looking for a little bit more. 
Ajax so falling smart. through and Ajax yeah. will fall. Yeah. Now, so the teleporter is still up, but this is yep. a lot of people to run back here, Hex. He moved it, though. He moved it from the spot before. Zarya just went up there to check where it was previous, did not find it, assumed it was down, but now the point got taken, so it's a little bit too late. The full wipe there was too much for them to overcome. Some smart play on both sides, but eventually they have to give it up. I thought they were in trouble, too, because Aethan died before that fight even started, died with uh, an Ana boost at the ready, so they needed that. They were able to overcome losing that very early ult ultimate and oh man i wanted symmetra to work even more but i think it's enough that people who at least will try it Hon honestly when you buy yourself that much time it totally works i i'm completely okay with what kingdom got off that first point defense they did come very close to the first point hold but this is where Immortals now going to try and build up some time. Juvenile off the top rope, drops the Earth Shatter, is countered by Earth Shatter from Nomi, sets up Immortals here for two kills, pushing back now on to the defense. And it's a little bit back and forth, but Jildy's in a good spot here versus Jesus, going to take him out. Still has Hook and chasing down Ajax right now. Ajax is trying to get away. Roadhog versus Lucio, will the Hook come in? No. Juvenile comes in with the saving shield at the very end, but a lot of space is made here for Immortals. A little bit sloppy, a little bit uh, maybe too aggressive from Kingdom there. Coming up over the top, they drop both tanks and right into an Earth Shatter, and uh, they got cleaned up after that. However, they rotate up over the bridge and are going to take this back away from them. So the cart will roll back. They've reestablished a point, and so... Their kind of early misplay that got wiped up a little bit is now not costing them anything. You take a look at defense from Kingdom. It's Wolf here over the top, is holding on to that Deadeye right now. Gonna have to back out just a little bit, but here's the Graviton. That's gonna set him up. Skulls popping up. Just settles for one on Ithan, but that's gonna be enough for Kingdom now to rotate back in. But Grim Reality turning the tides immediately picks up two. A fight that was looking like it was going away. The defense suddenly swapping. Grim Reality with all sorts of cleanup absolutely unleashed in the backfield. And suddenly, just like that, here comes the Immortals now in great position to really push in onto the second point. Anything you McCree, I McCree better. Back and forth between Wolf and uh, Grim Reality there, and he ends up getting the better part of it. Are they going to come out and contest this? They are going to. It looks like, yeah, they're coming out. This Immortals team is scrappy. They're trying to create chaos here in these fights. They're not giving up things that perhaps they should, but this is a point where, I mean, getting wiped here is not the worst. You're going to have to maybe be inside the door anyway, and that's exactly what's happening. They're getting wiped. They're going four players. Should be five. They will get this checked. So this is the mad dash coming in here from Immortals where they don't want to lose anyone. They need to maintain a full six and just slowly grind down the defense because once you have all six in here, Hex, this is basically the dream. If you go through and you die, then everyone's going to get wiped and it's not going to be great for the final push. Well, they're not bringing the May onto this defense either, so I think they, they don't really have aspirations of being able to wipe them out and then shut them out of the wall. So here comes the boost onto the Reinhardt. He gets hooked right away on the way in. Both Reinhardts boost the Juvenile missed a charge. He's got to recover from this. Both Reinhardts still nano boosted. That nano boost could be failing. However, it's the offense dropping the beat in the sound bearer. They do take down Juvenile, and now they're pushing back in. Grim Reality, Deadeye from the top, looking for at least one skull right now. Going to get it. Mana Snow super low. Down he goes. And it's still Immortals with a full six. Hype, the explosion piling on. And now it is Kingdom on the hot seat because Immortals very close to capping out this map. And that is not easy to do. But there it is, Hex. It will be Immortals finishing out the map after almost getting held on first. There's so much to say about that. One, what I brought up earlier is that Juvenile can be taken advantage of in his charges. You saw it very much at the, at the end there. He got boosted, missed his charge, was completely out of position. They cleaned him up. Then with that down, Man of Snow gets wiped out with the Deadeye because there is no shield tank in front to protect him. So they, they did kind of, they maybe they watched tape and understood how Juvenile plays and they're trying to exploit it. And you kind of have to wonder if they feel they're not good at defending this map beyond the first point, which is why they go so all in on that first point, because after that, that finally fell, it looked like they were jumping in with the coordination and they, they never really had a set six on a defense and they were trying to scrap it out and gut it out. It simply didn't work out for them. So I wonder if this is a map that they feel like once we lose first, we're in trouble anyway. So let's just never lose first. Not using May last point is a detriment to all teams. Due, due to the way yes. this map works and how good May is right now, if you are not using May third point, and even sometimes first point, you are just not playing the map the right way. 
I do tend to agree, May, especially for last points where the respawn advantage is so strong. It's so difficult to actually deal with her because even if you wipe out everyone, May, between ice block and ice wall, is able to stall out for a very long time and let those reinforcements come back in. So you're right, that could have been saved with a May. Or what I think is interesting here, just because we've been saying that we'd like to see it a little bit more often, there might actually be a Fira coming out here from Kingdom, although without a mercy. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. Obviously, attackers tend to swap things up quite a bit, but nope. this could be a very heavily dive-oriented offense here between the Winston, Genji, and Farah. Shine shattering your dream. It's not happening. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think Farah's bad here if you want to do a one-off on her and come around the flank and just really look into the back lines and try to take them down. You're going to be able to reinforce faster anyway, switch on to something else if you if you want to. So, yeah, they, they are leaving spawn with it. We'll see. I think they're trying to just get one-off picks. I, I don't know where this Farah's actually going to go. And it, it, it's okay. The Farah can come over the top and kind of do some damage. Although, go, going against a McCree like Grim Reality without a Mercy in your back pocket is ambitious. I'm just gonna note my dreams are not shattered. This is the triple <laughs> over the top offense. Agility's immediately taking out Ajax, so down to Lucio. This is gonna be all sorts of rough agilities. Just cleaning house from the flank. Really good position here from his Roadhog. Will fall to Jesus, though, so if the offense can continue getting trades like they're doing right now, the reinforcements will be coming in a little bit quicker, so for Kingdom, this isn't the worst. And plus, 4v4, that's where Tracer as a duelist can excel a little bit, but Kingdom doesn't like what they're seeing. They have to back out. I'm interested to see what Wolf can do on Genji. It's not a character I've seen a whole lot of him on before, and he had a really good hit scan and a really good, uh, you know, hero pool yesterday. We'll see if he can round it out, because uh, getting a Genji going on this roster would help him out immensely. Jesus, take two down immediately. Jesus just mopping up, makes it three towards the very end. They do not have an answer to his tracer. No one's really going in on him, and he's finding the right areas just to go in and take things out. Lucio under the gun, Roadhog under the gun, and Agility's just getting mopped up here by both Jesus and his companion Zarya. So just like that, Kingdom's starting to overwhelm this first point. That's a nice grab. Are they going to have to follow up? The Blizzard actually does come through, though. They could be a little bit in trouble now as this offense is there. Get a little segmented off. Only the tanks up alive as Ajax gets picked off on the side somewhere over there. Pushes effectively over, and a lot of it is because that Blizzard really shut them down. The Blizzard shut them down, and yeah, on the same note, it's also just... It's interesting that they were able to give that up because usually when an offense has that much of an advantage, it's difficult for defense to actually reinforce and get in there. Blizzard or no Blizzard, that was a great job by Immortals and a little bit of a throw coming in from the offense. So Jildy's able to take down Jildy, or Jildy's able to take down Jesus immediately there. Going to result in Kingdom having to reset fully. They still have two minutes, but this is a little bit rough. They're in a little bit of a bad spot. We'll see if Jesus can just kind of work his miracle. I'm a little surprised they're still on this fair. It has not really done anything at all, but here comes the dive in. Winston is going to go in, try to get his assassination on Sherlock. He does get one of his barrage and ends up killing himself against the shield, but that is two quick kills for the offense right now. It's a moving. Wolf right now did pull up the Dragon Blade, didn't get too much out of it to start things out. Has to go back up, able to live at all 30 HP. Sound Bear coming in here from the offense. Kingdom throwing all their cards on the table to take this. Grim Reality though, winning out Tracer v Tracer battle, so even while Wolf is up and dashing about, it has not gotten too much in the last little bit. It's gonna be Grim Reality here trying to pull things back, just trying to delay here for the defense, and there it is. The Blizzard from Hyped comes in, and this one-two punch between Tracer and May might be doing what Immortals needs to actually hold this point against Kingdom. Them. Looking very much like their defense. This is not a team that is playing like six right now. And luckily, they're talented enough that they can kind of pull it off. They just lost Jesus as they were trying to regroup and they were going to push as six. Now they're going to have to back out right now and they're down to it. Last push, probably incoming. They burned every single all. Jesus is going to have Pulse Bomb, but unless it's the Pulse Bomb of a lifetime, they're in deep trouble right now. It all comes down to this. This is Kingdom's potentially last chance to get point A and keep Eichenwald a winnable map here in the upper bracket. So we're going to take a look at Jesus. Jesus right now looking to come around the flank. A lot of times Tracers will throw a Pulse Bomb on a Reinhardt here. Not happening quite yet, but here it comes. We do have the defensive Dragon Blade on the way for the Jildies. Already has picked up two. Grim Reality piling on. The Pulse Bomb picks up another two. So the Ultimates of Mortals, too much for Kingdom to deal with. Now with 15 seconds left, it might be all but over. 
last moment mad dash coming in from Kingdom. We'll see if they can even put it into overtime. Now, Silver Lining dying that quickly should allow them to maybe get in here. They do have a Genji and a Tracer. They should put at least a body on the point. The Maywall is going to come on. Only Ajax got in. He's going to get frozen before he can even get on the point. That might be it. Can you get a dash on there from Jesus? They're going to Blizzard freeze it out. They are still holding on fairly, but it's all over but the crying. Sound Bear comes in for the defense, and that'll be it. Agility styling with a 4K towards the very end. Making it five. Oh my goodness. The, the cleanup on this defensive Genji, absolutely insane. But I still feel like the silent hero there was more the May, where anytime it was looking like Kingdom was going to take the point, the Blizzard came in, bought valuable time, and actually created a big distraction for Grim Reality to just dart in and about and pick off some very key kills. I, I tend to agree. They they definitely needed hyped on there. He slowed down the point several times, and it's also something you don't necessarily want to deal with as like Genji or a Tracer. It's not that she's necessarily going to kill you, but it's like, I will find an easier target somewhere else. This has to be the 5k at the end. So, I apologize. I was wrong. They think they'd go Farrah on first point. Uh, it is my mistake for thinking teams wouldn't do dumb things in any of these games. They will. And they were satisfactory shut out for the entire first round. Now, this is something where I maybe should have saw this coming, because Kingdom has a similar strategy on the beginning of Hanamura, where they go single support Lucio, and they run D.Va, uh, Winston, plus Reinhardt, plus like Genji and Tracer, and they run Divecom. And it looks like they try to do a similar thing here, with Sherlocky going on to Farah instead of his tra tra traditional Adderall. The problem is, Jesus was the one that really did the most amount of work in the first three attacks. It was not the Farah. It wasn't anything else they were doing, so they didn't really need to do it anyway, and they didn't have the support to sustain. When they don't have supports, they don't have the ults to sustain, so they didn't have Ana ult. They don't have anything besides Lucio ult. It's very difficult for a team like that to make it work, especially if you don't really win within the first two fights. Then you're down on ult advantage. You're down on the comp. Not a huge fan of their recent Lucio-only first point attack. I think the key to their first point attack there is that they really were hoping to get the first pick off there and go from there. If they actually get the first pick off, I think it's not too bad. But once you start losing people, particularly if you lose the Lucio first, where he's your main support, yeah. it's going to be very difficult to actually win that fight because you're basically all in on that Lucio actually living, getting more healing, getting his sound barrier up earlier. But if that doesn't happen. It seems pretty rough. But Immortals did what they needed to, because if they don't win the first map, the series is pretty much over automatically. But they win first map, they give themselves two opportunities to either win on King of the Hill or go to King's Row, which is one of Kingdom's best map, and I think it'll be pretty even. I kind of foresee this going to a third map of King's Row. But Kingdom got played really close by Wickwood and Spice and other teams yesterday, so I definitely think there is room to take them down. It's just going to be hard. Kingdom definitely doesn't look invincible on in control point maps. They just look very, very solid, and they do find ways of gritting out wins. But speaking of control point maps, as mentioned, next map here, loading and on the way, gonna be Li Zhang Tower here in our upper bracket semifinal, Immortals versus Kingdom. Winner going on the face, the winner of C9 versus Splice. A lot of people think that's gonna be C9, but uh, we will have to see. Well, they snap called Li Zhang to the surprise of no one. Uh, I think we were still in Eichenwald when they said Li Zhang, please. So they are definitely the team posturing to go to these control maps. Um, I don't know. They ran into everything they could handle in Immortals right there. And that's not a great showing as far as momentum-wise. The guys still seem pretty loose in chat, still joking around, some things like that. So uh, Kingdom... Justice. Should still be in a decent spot here. I think it definitely plays to their strengths. You saw just kind of the weaknesses of the team come to bear there. But I don't really know what the giant takeaway from Eichenwald is because we saw such strange things uh, from that Kingdom roster. Maybe one name that hasn't been mentioned a ton is Nomi. He has really played, I mean, undeserved role on Immortals and has played really well as a Mexican powerhouse tank. I think he has its void of juvenile and that will need to continue for them to win. He definitely won the Rhine games, and Juvenile got himself out of position in a couple really key spots when they were going more standard, and he was playing the Reinhardt, and they did take advantage of it. And that's what people were telling me. Like, if we saw how Juvenile played, a team can exploit that at a certain level. Juvenile, it's a case where he goes for big picks, but oh my goodness, we get big picks. Jesus opening up here with the hook on the hype. What an opening here. Two very quick pickoffs coming from Kingdom, and Jesus on a rampage finds the other hook against his opposing number in Roadhog, and just like that, 
off of those Roadhog hooks. It's going to be Kingdom very swiftly taking this first capture. We talked about how well Wolf has played, and that is true, and even his Genji was decent last time, but when this team is really flying and really doing well, it's Juvenile, Mana Snow on the tanks, and then when Jesus is even off tanking, that's when they're really crushing it. They're, this triple tank that they've run on control points has been a, a, something that teams have not necessarily had an answer to. Grim Reality's got a lot in front of them, and Shrugger was not up to the task necessarily yesterday. We'll see if Grim is now. So, right now, Kingdom not doing anything too crazy. Really focusing on the point. It's going to be Jilly's, though. Hook it towards the back. Going to get counter hooked in by Jesus. Finds himself in a rough position. Hit by the Biotic Grenade. But still using Whole Hog to make space. But it's not going to be enough. The rest of his team dying as they try and get onto that point. It's still an absolute devastation here in favor of Kingdom. So, once more, it's going to be Immortals. Find themselves pushed back. Wolf was really smart there. He got what he could and then did not risk his life trying to go after Rosario with low health. You know, he's got teammates around there that can do it. And the impressive thing about this right now is that they saved everything. They only had to use a, uh, a nano boost and it's already at 51%. So they're still in the advantage right now. And here it is, the Cleaver combo itself. Graviton Surge into Whole Hog. Jesus just walking in, picking up an easy three kills. Set up beautifully by Man of Snow. And that's a combination that I'm actually surprised we haven't seen too much more of in Overwatch, just because the downside of the whole hog is that it knocks people back. It actually does incredible amount of damage, so yeah. step with the Graviton, probably going to be people falling pretty quickly. And it'll crack their shields, too. Just, the damage output is super high, you're absolutely correct. They did lose Man of Snow in that skirmish, though. He will be back fighting, but this is going to allow some positioning advantage for Immortals to finally get on the point, push Kingdom back a little bit. So, here comes your shadow from Juvenile, though. They get grabbed counterwise. Wolf is spinning to win in the backside. He gets nothing for all ults and skill buttons. Wolf was very much countered by the Sound Baron, just good position in general. Grim Reality, though, not getting too much off his Death Blossom either, so both teams still in this fight, even as Immortals find a way of flipping it back over. Grim Reality going to be flying the Sherlock, is Mana Snow now getting into backline, a fully charged up Zarya, really pushing back in to the squad of Immortals, and might be the Zarya carry here, as Mana Snow has done quite a bit. Yeah, they bring it right back. Mana Snow is great. Uh, it's not always in the kill feed. He does do some late cleanup on his Zarya, but a lot of it is, is supporting Juvenile and supporting his other tanks. His allied shields are always on point. He keeps people alive. He does a great job of keeping himself charged up, so he's always a threat. Still at 90% right now, holding on to that Graviton. Gonna drop the Graviton. Only picks up one person in, but it will be zoning out the rest of the offense. Actually, not the worst here for Mana Snow. Two first kills going the way of Kingdom. Counter Graviton coming out, but it's very late into fight, and I don't know if there's the follow-up there that's needed. Agilities does pick up two, so not all is lost here from Mortals. And this is do or die. This is their final fight. If they don't take this, the round will be over. And it's looking like the round is over as Wolf uncontested here on this Reaper. Yeah, last second stalling, but this is the Kingdom team that is dominant on control maps, and they have been it, through the duration of the tournament so far. That stage in particular is something they're very good at. They, they really have Control Center figured out. Yet again, 100% pretty much. There's so All right. both teams still in this fight, even as uh -oh. mortals find a way. What have I done? Sorry, apparently. Uh, Apparently, my stream decided to randomly start in the background, so you got double the ZP there. One is more than enough, let me tell you. I feel sorry. But, so we are getting in here into the night market. And what would you like to see changed up here, if anything, from Immortals? It does look like we do have Grim Reality going on to the McCree for this round. I think that's smart. That's going to help shut down Wolf at the very least, and maybe he can start poking away at those people in the back line. Uh, I still think a lot of it always comes down to your Reaper here. And I, yes, it's not rock, paper, scissors entirely, but the three tanks for Kingdom have done so much work that at some point they have to get pressure down. Juvenile eats a, a bio grenade very early. They're going after him right now. He comes right back from the fight with his soul in charge. Both teams still trying to poke Juvenile, though, find himself very out of position, but he ends up turning it in his favor, taking down Nomi with the aid of Jesus. Three kills the way of Kingdom, so you live by the Juvenile, you die by the Juvenile. Sometimes he goes too deep, gets punished, but that time it was just deep enough, create enough of a distraction for Kingdom to go in there and win this first fight. So Kingdom, again, showing that they're very comfortable on these control point maps. A lot of that was Man of Snow yet again. Juvenile got charged early. He was right in the line of fire. He got ally shielded, so it just knocked him up in the air rather than pushing him into the wall. He's able to come back and provide the position that the rest of the team needed. Here comes the offense of Immortals once more. Nomi, though, again, charge in. A little bit over aggro. Gets taken out. 5v5, though, and this is where Grim Reality now, off of that Deadeye, lower number situation, can actually find a way of moving in here. Man of Snow not going to be able to withstand there. Too many headshots and taken down. And now Immortals starting to aggress onto this point. 
They are trying to come back in. There are still three alive. They do have the numbers advantage, but they're taking it very slow, just trying to pick the right moment. Here comes Hype. He gets boosted in, but he is knocked down. Still not enough to bring this point, uh, you know, to save this point for Kingdom, rather, as it will be Immortals taking Ordal. And that's something that I feel like Kingdom really needs to avoid is you can't let Grim Reality have that much space in the fight, especially as you get to lower numbers. He's just going to rip your team apart, especially if no one's focusing on him. And then you take a look at what they're running here from Kingdom. They don't have anything that can just counter poke Grim Reality. They really just have to get a hook on him or something. Because other than that, he can just sit in the back and just pepper them with shots all day long. Yeah, I completely agree. And uh, what Wolf does really well that helps his team out is he targets other Reapers, I think, more than uh, most other Reapers I've seen, so that he knows that he can keep his tanks alive if there is no threat to them. They are looking for it. Wolf does take down Agilities yet again, right on Q. Jesus was there with the setup for that, and Jesus right now on a little bit of an adventure, had to go back for health, is coming back in the fight a little bit later. A lot of his teammates have died, but he finds Grim Reality, and now the, with the Sound Barrier coming in, this is a great opportunity for Kingdom to reverse course and get on this point. We do have a late Earth Shatter coming in from Nomi, but it does set up for two kills. It's enough. The hype has been a one-man wrecking crew, and he got four kills during that engagement. So they they take the lead percentage-wise for the first time in quite a bit. Ajax gets staggered out extremely late. That's going to really hurt uh, Kingdom as they try to come back in here. But Kingdom does have some tools to work with. They do have a boost and a Reaper ready to go. They cannot die like that, though. I think completely caught off Ooh. guard. This fight, it's happening on a place you almost never see on this map. They're, go they're going very, very deep. I mean, Agilities was able to get three with the Death Boss in there, but... This is really risky. The offense is going to be immediately responding. Mortals having to back out. But now, if the offense thinks that they're on momentum, they might be sorely mistaken because take a look at Hyped. Hyped is holding on to the Graviton Surge right now and is just waiting for Kingdom to turn the corner. Graviton is going to come in, pulls in four, and he's going to be his own fall through. He's very charged up, goes to the back line. Going to get countered a little bit by Jesus. And damage might have been done here from Kingdom. They're able to withstand the Graviton and move forward right into everyone. I do not like that Graviton from Hype. You know it's the only thing you have up. You know you just burned a bunch of stuff trying to get really deep onto it. So what I would have liked to see them use that is to react to everything they knew was going to come at them. It is a hard CC. I mean, yes, Reaper can get out of it, but everyone else is going to be around, so you can to totally focus on it. You got nothing out of that grab. But they did have the advantage now as Chance is going to come and start this fight with Sound Barrier. Sound Barrier comes in here from Kingdom. Kingdom, Kingdom going to be countering Sound Bearer with Sound Bearer, but an Earth Shatter in from Nomi, knocking down three, setting up Agilities. Yeah. He's gonna spin right in, cleaning all that up. It's four kills from Agilities, set up by Nomi, and that should be all that the Immortals need here. That was the fight they need to win to win the round. Now we're tied one to one. That's the asterisk on the hype graviton is that everyone else was about 80, 90 percent, so it is something that maybe you can throw away in that situation, but didn't get everything they wanted done. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of a stage that if you're playing Kingdom, you have to win. It's not the, their best one here, so, uh, Immortals looking to take it back. One to one in this best of five on King of the Hill. Immortals already up one zero in this best of three opening round here. So, very close between both teams, and this is... For more reasons than just the series itself, this is absolutely a must win here for Kingdom. I really don't think they want to go down into lower bracket. Much harder to pull yourself out of it. Not impossible. We have seen teams make very deep runs out of lower bracket, but for them, they should win a control map with how much they've focused on it and at least give themselves a chance of coming back here on King's Row. Yeah, this is a map that they, they, well, I mean, they have to have for a lot of different ways, but it's a map that people expect them to have. This is how, how they've come this far, is on maps like this. So it, I think a lot of it is they're playing around how Juvenile wants to play. They got to clean up agility, so there they go. That's the first pick. Wolf takes on agility, so they have 6 feet 5 advantage. They're going to pressure it. It's that Wolf Reaper on Reaper that you mentioned a little bit earlier, where Wolf absolutely is targeting Agilities as much as possible, just because when the other Reaper is down, you don't have to worry too much as a Reaper yourself. And... While agility is down, take a look at all the space that Immortals has to afford the Kingdom here. Kingdom getting the first point relatively easily. The one upside here for Immortals at least is that they didn't give up too much in the way of all charge. They were able to back out, and oh my goodness, that hook not quite on the mark. Could have been huge, but here come Immortals once more. 
Immortals is kind of playing Kingdom's style right now. They're being very aggressive. They're not waiting for fights to come to them. You saw it in the last stage as well as he comes in. Wolf takes down Agilities yet again. He is finding the tank killer and then taking him out. Agilities right now on Roadhog, but still a big threat to your tanks is Roadhog sometimes. But Wolf does get taken down in short order as Hyped continues his reign of terror. And he's fully charged up, so that is Immortals taking the point right back away. 25% on the side of Kingdom as they have to retreat, wait for everyone to reboot. We're going to see some Ana plays coming in here next i would have to imagine all right and you take a look at kingdom here they will have sound bearer up from this next fight chance isn't going to have in the very beginning so there is a window of opportunity for kingdom they need to get in right here right now now you take a look at nomi nomi's gonna come in here with the nano booster trying to push everything back hasn't gotten anything just yet but a earth shatter knocks down two gives him the double kill and not only that it's gonna buy a lot of time for immortals to get some very key ultimates up I think last time on the melee we talked about Kingdom and even yesterday a little bit we said that this is unbridled aggression that they play with and they 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 fight in areas of the map that we generally don't see even as spectators and that's exactly what Immortals is doing. They're taking the fight to him. Here comes Wolf. He gets boosted in. Takes on Ethan right away. Takes on Hype. The Groudson, though, comes in and knocks Juvenile off the edge. But while it's going on, Wolf was able to get the backline pick off three. And Kingdom going to make the most of what could have been a very bad situation with that Graviton that came in from Hype. So Kingdom, they're going to recap here. But if you take a look at where Immortal stands now, they only have to win maybe two more major fights to win this game. So they're in a good spot. They don't have quite as much buffer as they might like, but still very winnable here for Immortals. It's very even right now. They do, don't have the advantage. I would expect Nomi to be the next initiator, not only because he's air shredder, but just how aggressive he's been playing anyway. That Graviton's going to keep him out of it. That's the whole hog follow up we're talking about. Sound bearer coming in with the whole hog. And what a response coming in from Immortals, not to be deterred by that Graviton. Doesn't matter if four people are hooked in when you can sound barrier whole hog, push everyone back. And Kingdom almost certainly going to have to give up this point. But as close as close can be right now is about 60% on both sides. Nomi was just waiting for his moment. They got caught in the Graviton. The whole hog came out. A beautiful sound barrier, actually. It's give Chance a little bit of love. Kept everyone alive. They responded by hitting all their own ultimates as well. Able to completely bring that back. Getting down to probably two fights here for Kingdom to not fall behind on this King of the Hill. So they are going to rotate through right side. Wolf does have Death Blossom up. That's about all they have to speak of. And Wolf has really been the X Factor here on Li Zhang, where he's been able to get to the back line and find kills they probably shouldn't find. We'll see what he does here. Is he going to go for Nomi or just go to the back? Right now, he's going to help his team isolate the Reinhardt, but it's too little too late. And oh my goodness, that Death Blossom was a poor decision. I get that this fight was do or die to some extent, but yeah, I guess he didn't really have a choice. I, yeah. I don't think they're going to be able to get back here in time, so... I, yeah, I, it wasn't I, ideal, but what choice did he have? I, I still forget how fast this thing can tick up sometimes. I thought they might have two agilities trying to take someone down what? with them on the way out. And then, uh... Did yeah, you see that? What did Winston just do there? Did you see that? I think Winston <laughs> literally just said, I'm going back to the moon. My name's John what? and I'm going to the moon. Hey, I, I have no idea. I mean, Team Rocket's blasting <laughs> off again. Whatever you want to say there, I have no idea what I just witnessed. Yeah, Agility jumped off the edge and hooked him, and then he got boosted and probably hit his rockets, and just it was too much physics for the game to figure out, so they, they sent him into orbit. I really need to go back and look. I realized it was as the game <laughs> ended, but that's like one of the biggest mysteries to me right now is what, what exactly happened there. But either way, we are going back to Night Market. And it's going to be Immortals here on match point. They win this round. They move on to the upper bracket final. Kingdom fighting for their right to stay in this upper bracket here on the night market. Well, Wolf is now on a McCree, and they're going to give Jesus the reins on the Reaper. So they're, they're going to see some uh, completely mirror matches here. We're going to see who can out McCree as this first battle goes on. Juvenile Shield already cracked, but he has a fire strike. Takes off Grim Reality. That should open things up for Wolf a lot in the back lines. Anytime you see Grim Reality go down early, it is very, very rough for Immortals. They do rely on him quite a bit to be their engine DPS. Wolf has slept in the back. It was a nice sleep by Ithan, but there is no fall through. Juvenile taking down Nomi, so two kills here to nothing in favor of Kingdom. They will be grabbing this first point, and Immortals going to have to regroup. I would like to be into their comms there, because they were backing out. They know exactly what you just said, that losing Grim early is very tough for them. And then they decided to rotate in, maybe looking for a pick or something. But then they decided not to go in holy because Nomi went in and then got isolated. So a very interesting kind of uh, wavering of decisions that came out there from Immortals. They're going to kind of come in this left side. You don't see teams use this a lot, but I think going in here instead of the front door, costs you a couple seconds, but totally worth it. A much cleaner entrance. Okay, Nanaboo's coming in here from Ithan. It 
went in on the Reaper and Agilities. Agilities able to get one kill off on Zarya. They invested a lot just to take out that Zarya, but Jesus is going to counter right away on the Nomi, so not over just yet. A counter nano boost is in here for Jesus. He's rushing down Grimmy Ali, but Grimmy Ali actually able to fight him back. Jesus did not like the look of that fight. Very close between both, and even though Grimmy Ali's taking enough towards the end, I think enough damage has been done here for Immortals that they will be able to retake this point, but 46% from Kingdom, not the worst beginning. Yeah, we talked about how Kingdom yesterday on control maps was getting the best rolls that they wanted. For those of you who don't know, after you play all three maps, you roll a random one. And they were always getting back to Control Center and Sanctum, and today they're back on a map that they did not look good on earlier. Uh, now the Graviton is going to come in, they start winning this fight, Jesus takes out Nomi, and they're going to kind of bully them back through this door. I wonder if they're going to come in and try to fight 5v6 again. It looks like yes, no, maybe. No, they're back Look now. at the Reaper corner that Jesus has put himself in right now. He's just willing to hang out here. I think he was hoping that everyone would come in over the top. He just wants to go in right as Immortals rushes in. Earthshire might be setting up a little bit here. Gets knocked down. Lucky he didn't die there. 15 HP. Will be able to back up a little bit. And overall, Kingdom's still controlling this fight. They got the few pickoffs that they need, and now they don't even have to use the Death Blossom to finish things out. It's just going to be normal, good mechanical kills. And Hex, they are one fight away from taking this round and forcing a round at number five. Hey, oddly enough, I think Immortals did uh, Kingdom a little bit of a favor there by stopping Jesus from coming in. I think he might have got flashbanged and then knocked away and had to retreat, but they were about to burn all their ults to try to win that fight on a cliff. So now here comes the boost on the Jesus. Up. Immediately deletes both Nomi and Ithan. No chance, no hope. Chance right now trying to boop him away, but this Reaper's way too quick. And Chance doing a good job of fighting back. Oh my goodness, he's still alive! How is Chance still alive? Told you, Finally, man. he goes down, was able to waste a lot of time for Jesus, and the only unfortunate thing there is that Kingdom had done enough damage that there was still no way that Immortals could bring it back, but good effort there from Chance to really stay alive as long as possible. Rollerblades are amazing. Are those like light blades, rollerblades? Are they like the same technology as Tron Cycles? They kind of oh my like... goodness. Oh, I, so I make a reference that you might actually understand, and now you're going to ostracize me for it? Oh. Uh, dude, Tron, I just remember the remake of Tron, and it was just the worst thing ever. Oh, not the worst thing. It wasn't Battlefield Earth levels of bad, but still just, <laughs> oh my goodness. Why, why have you remade this movie? I heard people liked it. I didn't see the remake. I was talking about the original. The original is in all its 80s glory, like old computer animation tech. It's beautiful. I remember back when people thought computers would just take up the size of the room. I mean, there was a point where they did take up the size of the room. It was like, computers will get bigger and bigger. Eventually, the computer will take up a football field. Well, we are twice as powerful as the computers we have today. This is, uh... Map stage and set stage for Immortals if they can... Ah, uh, Kingdom looking to bring it back. They, they've uh, kind of gutted out the last couple of stages that they were able to take. So, uh, again, RNG not in their favor. I think they would have loved to go to Control Center. They are not there, but they are taking first positioning here on the point. Very aggressive. It is still just posturing on both sides, but bloodless opening. There goes Grim. Takes out Mana Snow. That should open things up for Immortals. Agilities was there at the hook to open up that first pickoff. 65 for Immortals, and once you lose someone that first pickoff, it's so hard to bring it back. And Agilities right now, really good at just bringing in that sort of event. It's Grim Realities and Agilities, the McCree Roadhog combo, just picking off the remnants of this Kingdom team. And that's just the power of getting the first pickoff, especially for heroes that are very good in duelist situations. Uh, somewhat, it is a razor's edge, though, because you can't just give up a fight when you lose one every time. You have to continue to fight, and then even when you lose two, sometimes you have to still be in there. It's really deciding when to bail out. I thought yesterday, Liquid, a lot of times, they'd lose one and just give up the fight immediately. They're going to boost in Wolf on his quick free walk. Wolf coming in with the dead eye picks up two. The gambit has paid off. He's lucky he didn't get hooked off the ledge, but for Wolf, it's going to be a triple. And Kingdom coming back in with authority. Grimmiald again trying to do a little bit of damage before going down, but his team is dead all around him, and that is going to be Kingdom fighting back. And remember, this is the fifth and decisive round here where Immortals doesn't need that much more to bring this back. They need maybe three one team fights, and that's it. They move on. But for Kingdom, they are fighting for their tournament life. And Man of Snow eating the fire straight across the bridge is doing that very consistently. I mean, most of your sorry is due, but he's is consistently a threat. That Earthshutter hits absolutely Ooh. nothing for Juvenile. They are going to Sound Barrier on the way in. 
Ajax just walked right in there very casually, knocking Grim Reality off the ledge. Three kills here coming in from Kingdom, but when Grim Reality just gets taken out by Lucio like that, one more can you do? Beautiful stuff coming in there from Ajax. Well, Nomi's going to try to bring it back all by himself. The very late Earth Shadow. There's three in this corner. They're going to boost Nomi. They're all in on it. They're going to try to get something done, but that is another Deadeye coming out on the other side. It is Wolf, but he's just staring down Nomi, and she goes, oh, they knock him down, and Nomi gets slept and shot in the head. Unceremonious death. So it is back and forth between the, both teams. A kingdom holding a degree of dominance here. They need two more full team fights to take this and force a map three. Immortals definitely a little bit on the back foot, but take a look at what kingdom has up their sleeve. Jesus right now holding on to Death Blossom. I think he's just waiting for the speed boost to roll right in. I think Ajax and here he goes, Nana boost is in, Jesus moving in, not able to get as much as he wants, able to dodge the charge, zoning people back, but perhaps a little bit over aggro as it is full on nap time, and here comes the Deadeye, and Jesus able to live with 9 HP! Chance was coming in to try to get a double environmental kill on his right click, and he ate a sniping fire strike out of nowhere from Juvenile that really shut down his dreams. So both teams uh, a little, you know, behind in ultimates right now. They're both trying to get there. It does look like there will be a little bit more in the bank for Kingdom, and right now it's do or die for Immortals, so we're going to map three. Saber in here for Kingdom. Kingdom just looking with Sam. If they win this fight, they force a map three. Wolf, though, going to be first to fall. 5v5 between both teams. A lot now, all depending on Jesus. Will he be able to find a way to the back? Sound bear out, though, from the offense. But it might be too little too late. They're already down three people. It's going to be up to Grim Reality, and Grim Reality has one. Looking for Warwick, picks up the double, and he might be the cleanup that Mortals desperately needs if they want to keep this map going. Yeah, he's doing it pretty much by himself. They had an advantage very early on when Hyped went down. He was isolated and taken out, but they had three on the point, and that's not something that Juvenile can just stand there against. They did clean him up as well, but they are going to have to win three uh, fights a, a more on this map if they want to close out this early series. So, you take a look at what Immortals has. They do have a Dragon Blade, and Agility's very deadly as Genji. We'll see if he can keep things going, but Graviton Surge is going to come up, pulling in two members of his team. He ends up getting into it himself. Not quite what he plans. Has to waste the dash, but the counter is still out there for Green Ali. Grabbing Wolf. Agility's going to work his way to the back line, and positioning-wise, Immortals is handling this pretty well. Unfortunately, though, it is the Nano Boost on the Juvenile, letting them move in. Dildies with the late Dragon Blade, trying to do anything to keep this going, but it's just too little too late. I think he lost his window of opportunity. Still very close between both teams, however. Oh, there's only two tanks left on the point now. Only one tank did his hype, and he is trying to do his best. He's had a great series so far, but he's not going to have enough. They are going to have some late reinforcements coming in, and they're going to stall out before they even flip this point back over. So now it does finally go into overtime. It's Grimmiality taken out by Jesus. Desperation time. A grenade kills Ethan. It is yeah. total desperation time right now. Kingdom on the verge of forcing a map number five. Wolf and Jesus with the cleanup. Is there anything left in the tank here for Immortals? Grim Reality not able to get to the point in time. And we will be going to a map number five or map number three. It's going to be decided on King's Row. I mean, Immortals put themselves in the best possible situation to take the series right now. And now they go to a third map and you've got to give it to Kingdom as as the favorite one right now. I mean, they were up 2-1. I think they won the first team fight at four out of the five rounds. They were winning the meta war back because Road Hog the first few rounds, but I think Immortals was able to exploit that rather well with Agilities onto Reaper. And then Jesus went Reaper for rounds four and five, and it didn't seem like Immortals was able to react uh, the best way. Also, the alt usage for Kingdom was relatively better than Immortals. It was better, and I also feel like Immortals or Kingdom had more hero play as well, just in general. The amount of times that Wolf would go in and get two to three kills at periods where maybe shouldn't have gotten two to three kills was definitely more than what we saw coming out from Immortals, where Immortals, they were good about winning fights they were supposed to win, but they didn't have as many just crazy, wait, what do you mean you actually won this fight in this sort of situation type moment? So very close between both teams, but Immortals just a little bit below Kingdom there in Lijiang Tower. And now it's all going to be decided on none other than King's Row. If Agilities kills more than one person at the end, I think Immortals wins. That would not last fight. Not to put it on one player, of course, over five rounds, but if he gets more than one frag with an ulted Genji ult, he, I think they definitely secure the win right there. I, I tend to agree with that, and Hex, what is going on with your camera? You're like... What happened? You're like one quarter of your normal size. I'm just oh, already right? out, bro. Sorry.
Yeah, Sombra's already out. You can't blame this on Sombra anymore. Or maybe you I, can. I, I, mean. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I don't know. Fix it in a break? I mean, you could, eh, I can fix it in a break. Why not? Yeah. For now, you're just going to have to take a Tiny quarter X. of your normal space. Tiny, and Tiny X. X is becoming a regular Tiny fixture X. on this. Well, I was street. trying to. Yeah, I did do something. So that that's probably that's on my end because I was tired of it locking up. So are you going full Rick and Morty on me right now? Yeah, dude. Tiny Hex. <laughs> All Remember, right. Uh, I just told you, I was like, uh, I'm pretty sure that's Rick and Morty. This is a family show. Ah, uh, man. When is Rick and Morty season three coming out? That needs to happen sooner they rather they than later. Say. No deets. Uh, no deets. I need the deets. I know. Alrighty, so we are going to King's Road teams right now, debating oversides, but should be getting started here pretty soon. Now, predictions, guys, going into this for King's Road between Immortals and Kingdom. It does feel like Immortals has been a bit stronger on payload maps compared to Kingdom over the course of this, but it's hard to say because, I mean, Kingdom we've seen in particular have some really good showings in King's Row, so it, for me, I feel like it's almost a pick em. Uh, for me, when I watch these two teams play right now, I do think that Kingdom has the better mirror on the two main matchups that they're each playing. One being Reaper McCree. It seems like Kingdom, that is their de facto double DPS when they run it. And then Roadhog and the triple tank style is something that Kingdom's very accustomed to. Yes, Immortals have been running the same thing with Agilities and Grimiality, flexing mm -hmm. off into Roadhog, depending on, depending on if it's offense, Agilities will be maybe the Genji. And then on defense, um, Grimiality will be McCree, or Grimiality is going to be McCree. Either way, it does seem like Kingdom runs both of those better, and it, that fits uh, King's Row very well, because Re this is Reaper's kind of home map lately. Immortals, I think if they're going to win, I'd like to see them play, you know, other heroes. That That is where they are a better team in the diversity of things they could do, but they don't really have the Hanzo player that is the diverseness on this map that we've seen lately. Alrighty, so it appears the teams have been said it's going to be Kingdom here on the defense first. Immortals on the attack. King's Row final map here in the Alienware Monthly Melee upper bracket semifinal. Loser of this will have to fight their way through the lower bracket. Winner of this goes on to potentially fight C9. Should get an update on that series sooner or rather than later between C9 and Splice. Who you got, Hex? Oh, uh, I have an update. Uh, Cloud9 did beat Splice 2-0. So the winner right. of this goes on to play Cloud9 and winner's finals. A little bit uh, to be expected there. I actually thought Splice could have grabbed a map off C9, but it uh, was not the case. I mean, I, I tend to agree that it, it's a pick 'em, flip a coin. So I, I don't know. I just I'm I'm on the bandwagon. I'm not going to jump off of it yet. I'm just I'll, I'll pick Kingdom. Uh, I I think they I, I like how they play, and I'm a big proponent of style in Overwatch, and that's why I was talking about how Immortals had somewhat adapted Kingdom style and how they were playing in weird parts of the map and being ultra aggressive. Uh, I think it's great for teams to be able to adapt to styles like that, but I, I like how Kingdom plays, not jumping off it just yet. And actually, I'm worried, as you were, that if they have to go to the lower bracket, that, that might be it for them. So. Lot at stake here for both teams. Remember that as far as the earlier monthly melee goes, the second place team, should you get that far, will be getting $2,000. So just getting to the final zone, even if you don't win it, still mm -hmm. a very big deal for these teams. The match you don't want to lose is lower bracket finals. Yes. <laughs> That's, that, is, that is the worst feeling because you played all night and then, yeah. All right, so just waiting for these teams to ready up on the good old King's Row. Chance just saying uh, that Immortals needs one second here. Uh, Kingdom is ready. So Immortals would... needing a power for that, or someone just in the bathroom. It's hard to say. I mean, if you were covering old school Envy, it would almost certainly be someone in the can, because that was the Envy's thing back then, just throwing their teammates under the bus for whoever was going to the bathroom. Envy, right. of course, uh, in Korea right now. Hope to see them again soon. I think as far they're as, uh, the tonight. I think they're playing tonight. Uh, are they playing tonight? They are. No, Rogue and Rogue is uh, reunited plays tonight. Reunited plays tonight. Reunited. They're, they're That's an interesting team back. too. Just just because reunited, it feels like they've had a lot of changeups recently and just been struggling to find their identity again. Uh, been a really rough uh, last two months for reunited. I feel like. So as we go back to a little bit of discussion earlier that you mentioned ZP, I think like as the meta continues to go on. This is a good example. Both teams to me run the same type of lineups. I would like to see a dive comp come out from Immortals Hero with Genji 
But Genji hasn't really been that good on King's Row lately. So the alternative meta that we've seen is Hanzo Zarya, which I think is great on King's Row. The problem is when you don't have a Hanzo player, you can't run Hanzo Zarya. And I think as we see the game continue to move forward and more parity in the heroes, not having that guy who can play the one or two hero on that map that's really good right now is going to hamper you because it limits the amount of things you that is something that you see a lot of the very top teams in the game have right now as far, at least on the NA and U side, almost everyone has that Hanzo player that can look for the early picks on these first points like Kings Run. Now, it doesn't always work. Like, we have seen plenty of times where you think back to the Overwatch Open where, say, uh, Tavik wasn't always successful, and it is still somewhat risky, but when it pays off, it does let you get through these first points relatively easier than other setups. But, uh, Hex, what are we seeing right now on this defense? Well, defense looks rather standard, except that Ajax is not on a Lucio. He is instead on a Zenyatta, which is something we don't right. see. Uh, Ju well, I think he's out here, yeah, just hanging out on the point. Juvenile is going to be playing the Reinhardt Sherlocky on Ana. Man of Snow will play the Zarya. Jesus and Wolf will represent the DPS and Reaper and McCree, respectively. So there's no May coming out here, even though a lot of teams do like May here on King's Row. It's gonna be Kingdom coming out with that double damage in your face, pure power composition of Reaper McCree. Meanwhile, you take a look at the offense. Uh, the Genji is still going to be a thing here from the Jildies. So Jildies just gonna be looking to build up that early Dragon Blade, almost getting bopped immediately by the McCree headshot though. So a lot of power coming in here from this defense. Still, both teams at full. And it's really important the defense not give up the early pick here as that would be catastrophic. Yeah, so just kind of poking, rotating around, Agility's trying to get something going. Ajax actually takes down Chance, and that's going to open things up as Wolf does take down Hype now. That is probably it for the push on the offense as Nomi charges out, trying to get his life saved. Jesus takes down 8th in late. Grim Reality on the retreat also gets murdered, so that is 4 kills to 0 in favor of Kingdom on their defense. Now let me ask you this here, Hex. Do you think that Immortals is a little bit of a pickle here, running the Genji versus the Zen? I, because even though Zen is Genji's best friend, he's also his worst enemy when a Discord Orb is in play. Discord Orb plus McCree versus Jildies, I think it's going to be pretty difficult for him to do what he wants to do, barring a really good Dragon Blade and great support. I agree. I think the first Dragon Blade is one we're going to see if he's going to stay on it or he's going to get off it. Jildies has the ability to play something else. He needs to get it done here, though. He's at 92%. needs to land a, a volley of shurikens. I don't think he's going to get off it yet. I think they're going to give him the boosted Dragon Blade, and then we'll see. Uh, yeah, I think they're probably also a little thrown off by it, honestly. Yeah, I think Kingdom has run some things that are designed to throw teams off, and seeing a Zenyatta in the last couple weeks has been a rare sighting, so I think that's something that they're going to maybe change after this, but this is the push it'll decide. Here we go. Dragon Blade is coming in, but it's going to be immediately answered by Transcendence. Wolf, though, wasn't in the Transcendence, was not able to benefit from it, so Trans and Dragon Blade going mostly cancel out. Sember is in for the offense. Defense, though, still pretty good HP, but Grim Reality coming in on the flank, able to take down Juvenile. Two extra kills here from the offense, and I just wonder what that fight might have been if Wolf wasn't caught by the Dragon Blade, if he was able to stay alive. For Unfortunately, we won't know. Should be Immortals cleaning up the rest of this fight. The Dragon Blade Nano Boost has done its job. I think one of the things about Overwatch is that there's a lot of stuff that's uh, like in theory that this gets countered and that's true but there is also the execution the practice of it or too many teams are or too many players rather are, are very quick to give up on something like oh I saw a McCree as Pharah and so now I'm off the Pharah like I just can't I can't do it and it's like well just maybe you can beat him on that and yes the odds are not in your favor just on paper but right there I think they'd already invested too much in it they didn't want to give up on the idea of the composition they wanted to run regardless of seeing that Zenyatta and it actually worked out for him, despite actually pretty good grouping around that Transcendence, minus Wolf. All right, well, speaking of grouping and positioning, you have Jesus right now. He has crept to the back. I don't think they realize Jesus is here. He's going to be jumping right in. Nano Boost is in. Here comes Jesus. Helicopter's in over the top. Gets stunned out of his ultimate, but still, a lot of power punch. Chance giving him the juke maneuver again. That is a case where Lucio should absolutely be dead, and it's Chance giving his team the power they need to stay in this fight. And Grim Reality, because of that save, able to come in, will get the cleanup, takes down Ajax. Oh my goodness, what beautiful play from Chance there. Created aspect, I think, of Lucio games. A lot of times it kind of looks like a, well, a, a gag or a carnival trick towards the end where he's just skating around and he's buying a couple seconds. It's the only time we're talking about, but just absolutely denying uh, those kills in a super important way. The Dead Eye is up. They only get Nomi in this Graviton. It's a late Graviton coming up. It's reeks of desperation, but Juvenile does get a four person Earth Shadow. The problem is he just doesn't have the backup with him right now. He's surrounded on all sides by sound barriered enemies. That's never a position you really want to be in. And 
Kingdom, they're trying to make this happen, but really I think they'd be better off just giving up on this point and backing off a bit. All the momentum here in favor of the offense, but the last long enough to get the sound barrier, but here's Dildies working on the ground time. The blade is out, slashing into four people, looking for more, and that will officially be Immortal's point. They're gonna reset a little bit there as someone jumps off the edge, and this is now becoming a very, very quick time on King's Row. And King's Row last is not necessarily the easiest of points to hold, as some of the most, uh, you know, some payload maps have a very defensible last. King's Row doesn't necessarily spring to mind when that comes up, but they will have a couple ultimates up. Can Manus no hit a giant grab? They are gonna be a little behind the eight ball, though, because Ethan is going to have his ultimate as well. So they might even try to force a fight here, thinking they have the advantage, but oh my god, agility's reflexible. What a reflect coming in for Agilities. Still 5v5 here on this point, but Nana Boost is in. Agilities just dying to the back line. Who needs a Dragon Blade anyways? Gets a reflect on the Roadhog. Gonna push him back. And just like that, Immortals now with all sorts of them. And Lake Roadhog comes in for the defense. It's not gonna be enough, though. It gets a few extra kills. The only problem for Immortals, though, is that will they be able to maintain momentum as respawns start coming in? Agilities is still alive in this back line. He got stunned and still was alive. He was in the middle of three people, still was alive, using all of the, the Genji you know, cyber agilities to their full extent. No pun really intended, but... Defense right now is going to reestablish. The respawns have fully come in. Nomi is down, and once you're down your shield tank, really hard to keep that push going. But time-wise, plenty of time left here for mortals and a whole yeah. lot of ultimates in their bank moving forward. Got to think that we're going to be seeing Agilities dive in deep with a Sound Bear Dragon Blade sooner rather than later. And you take a look at the defense. They have the Sound Bear of their own. They're still going to be a little bit disadvantaged ult-wise, though. Kingdom needed that fight desperately, though. It was so momentum in favor of Immortals. And now winning a fight on last like this buys you essentially almost a minute on the clock. They, they desperately needed that. It's going to be interesting to see if they're reactive or aggressive. This Kingdom team is an aggressive team. There goes the Earth Shatter. Earth Shatter comes in. Agilities though, comes in over the top with the Sound Bear. Looking for that pickoff. Laying in the Ajax. Gets the kill on Lucio. Looking for a little bit more. It's a double kill for Agilities. Grim Reality with his backup. Everything going the way of Immortals here. And now, Kingdom on the hot seat. We'll see if they can even get back out here in time. But that's going to be pretty dubious with everyone on the cart. Ajax is getting out here on the point. He gets killed right away. They're trying to do this delay. The Earth Shutter hits almost no one. Juvenile is here. It's just the stall out game now. The stall out game will work for a little bit. If you start seeing some kills, there's one. It might actually turn completely around. There's two. Groudson comes in and enough stall was done. Ajax gave up his life, but it was for a good cause. He bought just enough time for the defense to get back in there. So Kingdom, uh, very lucky to hold this out here. 1.41 meters away. But Hex, now they have a real chance of holding because they really need to hold just one more major fight. I wonder if Grim is switching. Okay, I guess he just was going to try to, you know, carry that. He, he got a couple kills on that Death Blossom, but there were four people there. Juvenile in this flank position on the Reinhardt. He's looking to get his charge in. No, he wanted Nomi. He wanted to take Nomi out of the fight. Misses his charge. Good idea. Until he's just working on building up that Dragon Blade right now. Ithan almost has Nano Boost. They will be going for this Nano Blade combo almost certainly. That's all comes down to Jildies. Will be able to get done. Nano Boost is in. Jildies moving to the back. Sleep Dart, I think, just went in to not quite connect, but it's Ajax going in. Gives him the juke, and the Sleep Dart comes in late. St stopping him right then and there. And this has been an era of Juki Lucio's, man. It's been great. Still, though, uh, offense staying in there. Ajax does finally fall. Very close now between both teams on the point. Well, I just want to make sure that they do put someone on the point. Juvenile was there again, and he charged himself out. Cart control, cart presence. The moment he charged, I was like, I hope there's someone behind him. There wasn't. They close it out. Ajax was coming, too. Had Juvenile been three feet closer to that point, we might have seen another stall. So a really key thing about the amount of stall that Immortals was able to, or that Kingdom was able to buy there is that they brought it underneath the one minute mark. So even if they finish this on overtime, they will get that last moment attempt to take point A. And that's big. I did mention it before the game, but I, I thought that going a dive comp with Genji would be the right play for Immortals. And I think it worked out rather well for Agilities rather than going the Roadhog or Green Reaper. I mean, he had a great Genji game. Agilities, uh, I always thought it was a great Genji. We hadn't seen it yesterday, and I was calling for it several times. He's just that good on it. And ZP mentioned, even running into a counter, uh, at least a soft counter in a Zenyatta, and he did get countered pretty hard by that transcendence, was able to find the small opening they allowed him, taking down Wolf, and that kind of turned the fight for him. Wolf is going to try to show off his Genji now. So both no. teams setting up here, and no, Wolf... Don't. 
I don't know if Wolf is really much of a Genji player. I mean, I get they might have been leveling it up over time, but historically, Wolf has been more on the hit scan spectrum. I, I, I'm was down okay. to see the attempt, but I don't know if it's going to be super successful. He played it like stage one on Lijong, and it was fine. I think it was bad. He, he got some kills on it. I think he's probably better at McCree or something else like that, but if they have a very specific plan, they want to run him on a Genji. I don't know. We'll see. He's going against a May, though. All right, we do need a pause. I'm on it. Pause is immediately there. Hex, well done. Thank you. Good job, admin. I'm kind I of an admin. I'm a, I'm a proxy admin. You know, I think this is more continued good example of discussions of how top tier competitive Overwatch should be going forward. Is Wolf going Genji a good idea in the in a comp right now? Yes. Is Wolf on Genji a good idea for their team? Probably not. Not no disrespect to Wolf and his skills, but Genji is probably the third or fourth best hero for him. I'd almost rather see him on Widow and try to get picks that way because I know how good of a hit scan player he is. At the same time, you can't put him on McCree and put Jesus on Genji because he doesn't play it. So this is like the kind of problems that some teams are going to run into. The thing I really want to see out of Overwatch going forward is I want more shadow burns with more heroes where I yeah, want okay. to have, say, a shadow burn of Sombra. I want to have a shadow burn of all sorts of new heroes that could be coming out here where you see teams going, well, this isn't normally the meta comp, but this hero, this person's so good at this hero that it makes sense. Or you get the reverse where a team may has limitations and they don't go for certain heroes as a result. But it does look like Wolf is not going to be going to that Genji. will be okay. going to his more home field territory of Reaper. All right, so an interesting last second switch there. They are going against the May strategy, though. So a lot of it's going to be on how they choose to rotate in. It feels like they do know that the May is there, as this is what you'll see teams do when you know you're going to be going into wall. Go top right side. There is still wall possibility here, but Mays are kind of out of position if they have to do that. So they will gain entry by just sniffing out the fact that there is a May. Verso coming in here from the offense, gets Ryan all sorts of out position. Wolf with the fall through. So now Kingdom, they nice 6v5, and they don't have to worry about a shield tank. So this is going to be a playground now for Jesus. Nothing is stopping him from landing hook after hook. And look at how much space that Immortals is giving up here. They might just be giving up the point outright. I mean, even if they're waiting for Reinhardt, can Reinhardt actually get back here in time? Yeah, well, they're going to have the blizzard somehow already, and so they're going to catch everyone on the point. They are doing a good job of getting out of it as they do boost, but Grim Reality just takes down one. This is a lot of kills. Yes, they are bringing this right back. They brought it right back, and they did it in a 5v6 to start things out, but I guess that's the power of blizzard there, where Agility's able to build up the blizzard super, super quickly, even by May standards, so... Well done by Immortals, able to just back up, yeah. wait for the blizzard, and go in, and that... It's a bit of a... Uh, problem for the offense. Now, the well, offense are going to be coming back real quick, but here's the thing. Felt like, it's like they should have had. Either Blizzard's going to catch you because you're standing on the point and kill you, or it's going to get you off the point, and then the timer stops, and you're not going to be able to capture the point regardless. So Blizzard is big enough that it completely by itself alone denies points. So we see the offense coming in again, and uh, Jesus right now taking the scenic route over the top, looking for that hook that catches things off guard, but take a look at the defense. They're swooping around the entire other way. Deadeye coming in here, no refuge for Jesus. Giving Grim Reality gang the double kill. No one was on him, it was beautiful positioning. Takes down Wolf for the triple. And Immortals right now definitely out positioning and out mind gaming Kingdom a little bit. Yeah, and another Blizzard went down on the point, so even if ha they had lived through that, there was just no possibility to get this last tick going on there. Hyped is going to have his Graviton up next too, but right now it is the advantage for Kingdom. It might be one of their best shots at this, because they do have an advantage over them. Most of their ults up. They do get one person segmented out. Mana Snow is going to be behind here. Sound Bear coming in here from the offense. She is taking down Chance in that building, so they get at least one off the Sound Barrier. Bullhog came in a little bit late, and Grim Reality just barely shaking that hook. Ends up getting pushed way far back. Nomi now off on an island by himself. Has to wait for the rest of his team to come back in. Still 64 as Kingdom getting pick after pick. This should be point A. Yeah, they will actually clean it up this time. They they kind of sensed that they had a little bit of an advantage. And it wasn't overbearing. They didn't have six ultimates or anything like that. But they knew the other team had just used a bunch of theirs. So even if they only had one or two up, they were definitely going to throw them in. They are very far forward right now. Looking for some picks here as they leave two back on the cart. Got to uh, protect the Sleeping Man of Snow up front. If they find no pay dirt up here as far as late picks going on, they're just going to try to get some spam and try to build some ults. 
And the big question going to the next fight, what is going to be more powerful? Will it be the Blizzard of Agilities or will it be the Death Blossom of Wolf? Wolf, the problem for him is Wolf is flanking up here, but the defense is going the entirely opposite way. Wolf's gonna have to run back. His team is actually taking it 5v6 right now. But no one has died, so they've positioned around this pretty well, even as Wolf has to just huff it all the way back here. And he does it in style, ends up with four kills of the Death Blossom. His long trek, not unrewarded, gets the flank he was looking for after all. Well, after 30 seconds of development, we hope it was worth the wait. It absolutely was. Wolf got four kills off the Blossom, got a fifth just hanging out there. They completely negated the uh, Blizzard being up because Blizzard's fine, slows everything down, and you can kill people very free, but not when everyone's dead. Very hard to kill people when everyone's dead. So much so that Agility is done with the May for this last point. He's switching back over to his Genji. I don't like this at all coming out here from the defense. They roll back in with no positioning, run right into the Graviton, and just get mopped up. Up. They wasted ultimates in turn as well, and now they've given King Dub a golden opportunity to move right in. And Hex, why do you think teams go for that last moment attempt there where they sacrifice position and try and go in? Don't you think it would have been better for them to hold back a little bit? It is one of the points that's very hard to decide if you're going to do it or not. And more often than not, defensive teams will. The big reason is that it's a, a terrible point for the offense to try to take, that the best time is your first attempt on it. Otherwise, the walk is all the way back of that spawn, and you might as well take a bus there. It takes forever to get there. It's worth the risk a lot of times because if you stop them there, you have a great chance of denying for three or four minutes. Chance finds himself way out of position. Ajax and Countless Grabs on with the Sound Bear, keeping his team nice and healthy to start things out. Wolf gets that back line on the hyped. Everything going the way of Kingdom. They have three minutes and ten seconds left, and they are on a roll. This might be too much momentum for Immortals to stop. Kingdom so close, and they're going to do it. Wow. Finishing out the map with three minutes and three seconds left, and they're going to get a little bit of bonus time on top of that. Score three to three. They needed at least one team fight win in the street space. I mean, yeah, you're talking about, is it really worth going at the end? In hindsight, no, but they kind of needed to make a play there because if they don't try to at least take that fight, it was going to be pretty bad. Now, at the same time, they do... And then they get steamrolled through the third point. So maybe if they didn't take that last fight in the second, they would have had some chance of getting together. I, yeah, I think teams prefer to fight at second. And I think the, the benefit is there just because you're keeping them all the way back at that terrible spawn um, rather than fighting at third. I don't think the third offers the huge defender's advantage that uh, some other third maps do. So, I mean, you're right in retrospect. But if you win that fight, they're in a much better position to even maybe close out the map. All right, so both teams setting up here once more. It will be Kingdom on the defense first because they have far more time here. And this is really good for them because holding just one fight, more like two on King's Row with how close it is. Holding two fights, though, on first point King's Row, very doable. Holding multiple fights versus three and a half minutes, not so much. So for Kingdom, they have a golden opportunity here to win King's Row and advance forward to face C9 in the upper bracket final. One of minute's not grand to push into because it's going to be pretty much altless maybe if you're up a very fast charging uh ana you can do that there's situations here where you might even want your team to eat a lot of damage so that you can charge your ana alt and have that be the linchpin of your only your first and likely only push Mozgun's been here on Agilities. He needs to get the early pickoff here to start things off on the right track because Immortals can't really suffer a long, drawn-out poke fight here. They've already given up almost half their time already, so they need to make something happen soon. Otherwise, this is going to be their first and only attempt. And take a look at Juno. Juno going in deep, ends up going too deep, but exposes Wolf as a result. Jesus, though, firing right back. 5v5 between both teams, both Roadhogs striking blood early, but Agilities finds Jesus, and here comes the side of Immortals, last ditch attempt coming in. I thought this was going to be the one situation where we would see Juvenile play a little more conservatively, but I, you know, Tiger can't change his stripes. If Manus No takes down Nomi, they are bringing it back somehow on him. They bring it back, and normally this would be fine for the offensive response coming in, but if they die here, that's going to be it. The Graviton sealing the deal, overtime ticking away, and that is going to be it. Kingdom with the hold here on point A. Now three and a half minutes for them to put away Immortals. Immortals will have lower bracket at the very least, so... Not necessarily out of it, but you always want to stay in the upper bracket, uh, mostly so you can get to the end and get a game advantage, and also just... It's a lot easier road up here. Uh, so double elimination tournament, three and a half minutes. Feels like an eternity for Kingsrail first. 
does feel pretty long here where I would say Kingdom, they're going to need a defense that's nothing short of miraculous here. This is where you sometimes wonder about running really gamble plays like running a Symmetra or something like that. Not that I think they should per se, but it almost feels like they need an extra leg up where something that doesn't always work on first but can give you an edge as the fight progresses or like a Mercy or just something that gives them some insurance because it's going to be hard to hold on to this, especially if the offense just hold, banks their ultimates and goes for one mega push. I'm a little surprised they're not running a Mei, to be honest, because that's what kind of saved their their defense uh, last time. So Agility is instead going to be on the Roadhog. And for a moment, Jesus was on the Tracer and Wolf is back on the Genji and actually would not have minded that because they're kind of pick characters, dual characters. You get in the back lines and you just start doing trades and you have enough time that trades can snowball into a first point victory here. All right, so Kingdom right now setting up. I wouldn't expect them to go too, too hard early on. I think, they're gonna, again, they have the luxury of playing the long game. Now, if they see an opportunity, they're going to go in on it, but they're not running a Roadhog. They're not looking for early pickoffs. I think they just want Wolf to get this Dragon Blade and go from there. It appears to be the plan. Wolf is going to dance around here. They Everyone else rotates through the hotel, so that's interesting. They get a really nice early pick on a Jesus there. That is going to put a big hamper in the plans of them, but they do switch off. There goes Nomi down again. Now he goes down 5v5, and this is really good for the offense just because of respawn advantage. And Wolf right now just chilling out towards the back, looking for opportunities, landing shurikens. He's at 80% right now, about to have a Dragon Blade, so even if he dies here, it's not the worst. Defense will restabilize, but Dragon Blade going to be up for the next fight. Big opportunities ahead here for Kingdom. Well, Dragon Blade, the Ana boost should be in there as well, so that a lot is going to hinge on that for the next fight. They will have their own Ana. The Graviton could put a damper in things. It depends if he can time it out uh, that there's no dash available. That's exactly what you want for your Zarya to be able to shut down what is going to be incoming on them. The key for Immortals here is they really need the Manager Altakami. They're going to use just about everything on this fight. Deadeye into Nano boost in the Graviton. They do get the kills they're looking for, but... Oh, I don't know about that there, Hex. I kind of feel like they needed to save a few of those ultimates. They used so much there that now they're not going to have a whole lot to deal with the Nano Blade that's on their way. No, it's so smart. You know who did save ultimates? Everyone on the pushing team. That was a junk rush I don't think they were expecting. But when it came out against them, the call has to be don't use anything. Because they're going to have everything up and there's going to be zero up for the defense. I really like that from Kingdom. Here they go. Wolf going in. Doesn't get the nano boost. This is just raw, normal Genji, not aided by Ana. Still, still picks up two. Yeah, and holding. it might be enough. They're holding the boost. I mean, Jesus might get it. No, they're just going to give it to Juvenile. He gets grenaded right away, though, in a tough spot, but still kind of chunking his way through. Jesus gets slapped, but this is it. That's too much. They're going to take this point. I'll be honest, sir. I think Wolf just got out of Sherlocky's line of sight. I think the plan was to give him the nano boost, but in the end, it works out. Kingdom now with a dominant mo position here on the point, and they're just a little bit away from taking out Immortals and moving into that upper bracket final. Full positioning on the point. Sound bear in, and that is going to be it. It's Kingdom taking it, and they have a date now with Cloud9. I love that Five, penultimate fight, though. They baited out ultimates, four, and then they just had three. a huge advantage. I wasn't even expecting it. I was expecting them to go in with what they had, and I, I don't know if once they saw uh, Immortals using ultimates that they decided it, or they decided they were just going to junk it anyway, but very, very cool play from Kingdom. I mean, they gave Kingdom three minutes. So it's yeah. very hard to win that right. many fights and hold. I mean, we used to see yeah, first point holds on King's Row happen a decent die, amount of time. Die. Wolf coming over bar, ulted on everyone. I feel like that's happened to me maybe a hundred times. That exact Only a hundred? I cannot wait for Anna boost, speed boost to go away. <laughs> I mean, that. Uh I mean, I was just playing comp for the first time a while post BlizzCon uh, last night, and I, I definitely, I was both on the giving and receiving end of that combination. Feels good when you're doing it, feels bad when you're losing to it, but uh, either way. Pretty good stuff coming out from Kingdom, and now Kingdom, they've beaten C9 before, although C9 has had a lot more time to gel the roster. I do favor C9 going into the upcoming matchup, but uh, Kingdom definitely showing that they have a puncher's chance. Yeah, they I, do. I, is it best of five? It is best of five. Now, this both helps and hurts them. It does, I think, hurt them because Cloud9 just has a more versatile roster in terms of the hero picks, and that makes it easier for them on maps. At the same time, for Kingdom, they have now a better chance of getting at least one King of the Hill, maybe two uh, maps they know they can beat Cloud9 on as they did it just this very last tournament.
Hex, uh, what are your thoughts going into the upcoming matchup before we take a quick break? Uh, I was really looking forward to it. I'm glad we're going to see it. I give them, I, I, I do like the term puncher's chance. I would say that Cloud9 should still be your favorite. Uh, and I think that Cloud9 of all the teams would be able to adapt to the style that Kingdom is bringing here because they're a bunch of smart guys and their alt economy over the last couple of days, how we've seen Cloud9 playing has been unmatched and they've they've really shown me a lot. I do don't, I don't think they get shut out. I don't think it's 3-0, but I definitely give Cloud9 the favorite. Uh, just one final point for you go to break. Just because it never happens, we did get to see Kingdom do a Zen Ana defense on first point. There was yeah. no Lucio. Anytime there's not a Lucio played in Overwatch, <laughs> I will always want to point it out because it is so rare that we <laughs> see it happen. I hope to see more Ana Zen. I think it'll, it'll probably happen a lot more in terms of first point defenses, maybe a little bit first point offenses. But I would love to see teams experimented more. I wonder if Cloud9 will it play it at all again in this series and go back to just the Ana Lucio. Alrighty, so we're going to be taking a short break. When we come back, the upper bracket final will be heading your way here in the Alienware Monthly Melee. Stay tuned.